Okay, welcome back to our study about evil. And we're up to the third part. Number one, we did about adjectives describing. Last week we did uh, bad deeds. Today, it should be a two-parter uh, because we do five at a time and we've got eight subjects of criminal and capital punishment. Ooh, that sounds interesting. And like I'm going to say, like I say, every time we do these videos, you're going to have to get them all. This is too much now. We are on the 11th video. And there's just too much to go back and say, this is what we learned. This is what we did. I mean, we had two or three introductions into this study here. And open your Bibles to Deuteronomy 17. And we're looking at the word evil throughout the Bible. We're not going to look at all the words evil, but I think enough of them that we got 54 pages and we're on page 10. I think we should hit the subject quite well. So criminal acts <clears throat> that violate the laws of God and man. Penalties that are affected or effected by unlawful acts of doing evil. Sin. And as I said before, evil can be sin, evil can be the results of sin, and evil can be sin and the results thereof. So when it says, God says, I create evil, God's not sinning. He is giving us a retribution by what we've done in sinning. So, Deuteronomy 17, 7. The hands of the witnesses, we'll start verse 6. At the mouth of two witnesses, or three, he shall that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. The hands of the witnesses, the two or three or more, shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards the hands of all the people, so thou shalt put the evil away from you. Okay, so first of all, when we're talking about capital punishment, the very first rule we look is you got to have at least, at least two witnesses. And the more, the merrier, if I can say it like that. So, and there are people out there. That will say crime does not deter. I mean, capital punishment does not deter crime. That's what they say. Well, they're Bible rejectors. And they be, be claim of their thoughts to say that, oh, I'm a Christian. And you say that capital punishment does not deter crime. You reject the Bible. Oh, no, no, no. The Bible. Uh, you reject it because what does it say? The hands of the witness, his, witness, his, shall be first upon him to put him to death. Capital punishment. And by the Jews, it was usually stoning or hanging. And afterwards, the hands of all the people. So the, the people that say, I saw him do this. Here's the stones. You're first. Then everybody else gathers together and finishes off the job. And afterwards, all the hands of all the people, so that so thou shalt put the evil away from among you. And this chapter is talking about idolaters. Look at verse 2 and 3. Yeah, it's all, death penalty is also, is for murderers, but these are people involved in idolatry. Our nation, not individual, I do not have that right. As an individual Christian, our government has been charged through the Old Testament that we are not to allow and give constitution freedom to religions, were to destroy them. 
And the moment that this country signed the Constitution right, that you can have false gods and small GODSs, and you can come up with heretics and come up with heresies and come up with deceiving and come up with false prophets and come up with religions and get a license to do it in this country. You put a coffin nail in America and don't say ever again, God bless America, when you got God, when you got God plural, running around and allowed by freedom. You say, should America get rid of these religions? If we're a Christian nation, what does God say about idolatry? It's capital punishment. We as a nation have a hard time trying to capital punishment somebody who has done a crime as murder. Never mind idolatry and witchcraft and all the wicked things that go on. Well, you're reading from the Old Testament. What does God expect? We read by the Old Testament. And, you know, we run to the Old Testament. Well, you all not get tattoos. And, you know, a man should not wear what pertains to a woman. But, you know, like idolatry and all that. Uh, we've got a constitution right to, to serve other gods and religions. And that's where you put a coffin nail in America. You are not allowed. Now, as an individual Christian, I am not allowed to talk uh, uh, to destroy them. I'm allowed to talk to them in the name of Jesus Christ and the gospel. If you want America to be a Christian nation, we need a president that stands firm on the testimony and the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ alone and no other gods and no other religions. They're not allowed there to be scarce and gone and depart. As the only revivals that ever happened in Judah were recorded as they cleaned up the house of God, the temple, they got rid of those gods, they got rid of some of the high places, they got rid of the groves, they got rid of the idols, they forbid the worship of other gods and worship God Jehovah alone. That's when the revivals came. And you're not going to have an, a revival in America where your state, and I mean your country constitution said you have the right to meet under a false god and will protect you under the law. And you allow those gods in your public schools, but you take out God in the Bible, you take out Jesus Christ in the Bible, and you take out the Bible, and you take out prayers to that God, to that Jesus, to the Bible. You take that out of your public schools, you take that out of your court system, and you allow the false gods in. You're not going to be blessed. And if this nation is going to get right, what will they do if they will not believe? And they continue in their religion. What's the Bible say? As a nation, not an individual. Romans 13, God has given the ordained powers of the government to use that sword to, against people who have committed crimes. As the government. You want to be a Christian nation? You want to be one nation under God and, and God we trust and God bless America? You got to get those religions out. Or just shut up about being a Christian nation and just shut up about uh, God bless us. Then shut up about in uh, God we trust because which God? That's the problem. A lot of gods in America are which gods? W I T C H. So. Here's a crime worthy of death penalty. Men and women that are sitting on death rows that are evil in the eyes of God and the word of God. And there's several crimes, many crimes, in the law, the law, worthy of capital punishment, and they, the crimes and the criminal, are evil. So the evil here are the people that are worthy of biblical capital punishment. It's not, you've already sinned. And it's not the evil of the sin. It's the consequence of sinning, the consequence of idolatry. It's a sin. What is the evil? We're to put you to death. That's what the law said. What Israel was to do. Was not to be allowed. 
Deuteronomy 17, 12. Hey, what the Bible says, right? I'm reading the Bible, am I? I'm not reading no no fairy tales. I'm not reading, uh, you know, a, I'm not reading something you find out at the checkout scan, uh, checkout scan or register. My mouth, my mouth is not working with me today. I apologize. This is a King James 1611 Bible. I'd be afraid what other Bibles would say. I'm not even going to look it up. Deuteronomy 1712. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister therefore before the Lord thy God. And let me stop right there. That's not a Roman Catholic priest. That's not an Episcopal priest. This is a priest of the family of Levi, of the sons of Aaron, in the Old Testament, of the nation of Israel. Don't go saying it's your Catholic priest. Don't go say it's your Episcopal priest. Don't say it's your Wicca priest. Don't say it's any, it ain't the priest of today. There's only one priest class of people, and Jesus said it's the born-again Christian. That's the priest, Revelation 1. But we are in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. We are under the nation of Israel, about to go into the promised land, and God has set forth rules, standards, statutes, commandments when you get in that land. And when the Jews get in that land, they are under the authority of God. There's no king yet. That was a sin. But God is to be their king. And they're to obey the priests. Which means the priests were to be right. So he does not obey the biblical order of the Old Testament of the sons of Aaron, priests. That standeth to minister before the Lord thy God. Or unto a judge, which was also the Levites. And respectable men of high honor before God in the cities. The judges. Even that man shall die, that thou shalt put away evil from Israel. Okay, again, capital punishment does not deter crime. You are not a Bible believer. Because I just read to you, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, by the inspiration of God Almighty, say, Moses, write this down. Or even God himself writing it down and giving it to Moses. Because when we look at Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, we're looking parts that were written by Moses and written by God when Moses is on the mount for 80 days and 80 nights, one period, 40 days and 40 nights, and then another period, 40 days and 40 nights. This came from the hands of God. The Bible says, with God's hand, he wrote. And this came with the hands of Moses that he sat in front of God and wrote down. Capital punishment deters crime. And if you don't believe that, you are not a Bible believer. I don't care if you're saved. I don't care if you're Catholic. I don't care if you're, you're anybody important of this world. I don't care. I care what the Bible says. And the Bible says capital punishment deters crime. I'll read it to you again. Even that man shall die because he has not obeyed the priest and the judge and shall put away the evil from Israel. Now, can you imagine the point of time in America or, or England or whatever nation you have when the judge tells that, that person st standing in front of that judge, says, I want you to do this, and they don't do it? And the court says, execute? I bet you would have a lot of, don't say it, Stanley. I bet you would have a lot of, don't say it, Stanley. Fathers paying the mothers for the children that they sired when they decided to get a divorce from the mother. 
You know, that's one that's one of the things that they don't listen to, to judges today. I want you to pay child support. Oh uh, the judge said it, didn't he? Didn't he? Did you obey it? If we were in the un you know, for those who want to be under the law, seven day adventists, how many seven day adventists do not pay child support ordered by the court? Well, the judge, God, the judge says, if you don't obey that priest, you don't obey that judge, you're the capital punishment here. As he determined for other seven day Adventists, you better, you better pay a child support. Or anything else the judge has told you to do that you have not done. Ooh, that had a good one. Now. <laughs> It's a crime of a man or woman that will not listen and obey civil authorities. Oh. As a judge or a law enforcement. And the, the Jewish God ordained the priest of the seed of Aaron. Someone has judged. Oh, now I'm really going to get into it. Somebody has judged and said, there should be no parking right here. I'm going to put a sign that says no parking. And you violate that. What's the Bible say? Now those who want to believe, we're under the law. That, that's the series in the law. The judge said don't do it. You do it. Capital punishment. For parking in no parking zone? The law was fierce. The law was fierce. Aren't you glad you're under grace? Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 17, 12. And the man that will not do presumptuously will not hearken unto the priest. That's not the priesthood. That's an Aaron priesthood. And stand to minister before the Lord thy God and unto the judge. Even that man shall die. And shall put away the evil from Israel. And here were certain religions. Got their authority to banish, abuse, rob, torture, and even kill men and women. Who would not obey the state religion. That is also evil. As would be the congregational church. And the Anglican Church down south, the Congregational Church up north. If you don't come to our church and you don't pay your taxes to our ministers, we're going to confiscate your fields, we're going to confiscate your cow, we're going to run you out. That, that's where they get that from. Problem with the Congregational Church, problem with the Anglican Church, problem with any city state, problem with any state religion, problem with anybody who tries to... That verse is not our verse. Notice what it said at the end. What is the last word of verse 12? Israel. You know what the Congregational Church try? I don't know much about the Anglican. But you know what the Congregational Church and the, and the, and the pilgrims and, and who became the Puritans up north in Mass. You know what they try to do? They try to have their own Israel. You say, Scott, well, you just said, you know, that the state should get rid of, these. yeah, it should get rid of these religions. Because eventually, if, if you were put the penalty that God said, they'll run out, and they'll leave. They don't need to touch them no more. But we're not to aid in bed. Aid in bed. They're criminal activities of false religions. serious so e the evil here is when someone who would not listen and obey the judges or the Aaron priesthood of Aaron that God set forth to be the high priest and any of his children and any of the Levites that were to be priests it's so simple in other words, what do we say for the Christian? I'll tell you what we say. We're to do right. We're to abstain from all appearance of evil. 
Number three, 1919, Deuteronomy 1919. Then shall ye do unto him as he had thought he had done unto his brother. So shalt thou put the evil way among you. Now let's go back to verse 16. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him, that which is wrong. Then both the men between the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. Here's the priests and judges again. Aaron priesthood, Levitical priesthood, not today priesthood. Which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make a diligent in inquisition. They're going to search it out. They're going to test it out. They're going to weigh it out. They're going to get all the evidence that needs to be. And behold, if the witness be a false witness, and he has testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he hath thought hath he done unto his brother. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. So, you got a man. He's standing trial. He's guilty. And so we don't get them in, we don't get them mixed up. I'm going to say a, a woman comes in and gives her testimony against the guilty man and her testimony is false. For whatever reason, she has perjured the court. And what they do is they go out and they, they, they examine what this woman has said. They examine everything this woman and they found out that she has been and is a false witness in the court. Now, whatever that man stood guilty in the courtroom, whatever his sentence was, let's say he were to go to prison for six months. No, he don't. That woman goes to prison for six months. Let's say that man would pay a fine of $100. No, she would pay $100. Whatever would happen to him, the false witness would be put in the obligation to what that would happen to that man. Boy, that would get rid of a lot of false witnesses in the courtroom. Liars. It's almost like to the fact is I too bad God didn't give us the Pinocchio nose every time we lied. So this evil is for the evil of perjury or bearing false witness. Now, let's look at it like this. Did they not find many false witnesses to stand against Jesus that the fact is they couldn't even just, they couldn't even agree with themselves they were so false? Right? What were the Sanhedrin supposed to do to those people that lied about Jesus? They were, what was the penalty that they wanted Jesus to get? Death? All the many false witnesses they got against Jesus, all those false witnesses should have been crucified. What the verse says? The order from Jesus would have been they wanted to crucify him. False witnesses came up and lied about him. What should have happened to them? Jesus should have been let go and the false witnesses should have been crucified that afternoon. They didn't obey the law. Matter of fact, they themselves, the Sanhedrin, the high priest, the two high priests, <coughs> they were false witnesses themselves and twisting the truth. They should have been crucified. But Jesus Christ was crucified in their place. Jesus Christ was crucified for the false witnesses in place. Jesus Christ was, was, was stood in the place of Barabbas. And Jesus Christ stood in the place of this liar. Because I have told lies. I have been a false witness. And Jesus Christ took my sins to the cross for me. Deuteronomy 21, 21. We're at number five already. I'm just having fun. Hopefully next time we do this, my, my mouth will be a little better. 21, 21. 
And all the men of his, of his city shall stone him with stone, that he died. And, show, and shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. All right, before we look at the circumstance, what five things have we seen in common here? Capital punishment, according to the Bible, deters crime. No, it don't. Shut up. You don't believe the Bible. I don't believe in God. You don't have a say anyway. You know, up in New England, the first being of what the, the young United States was? The United States was in its infancy. Do you realize that you could hold no public office? You could not vote if you did not belong to a church? Atheists did not have a voice in America. You had to belong to a church. And too bad that came all messed up and screwed up. But that's one of the foundations of this country. If you do not believe capital punishment deters crime, shut up. You're not a Bible believer. We looked at five places already. And we got a few more. This one has eight. Next week we'll do three. This is what God said. Moses, write this down. Capital punishment deters crime. Get the evil out of Israel. What is it to do? Well, let's look at this one. This is the last one. Let's look at the context. All right. Deuteronomy 21, 18. And this goes perfect for today. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, a child that won't listen. Sound familiar? Children are shooting up the schoolhouses. The children are shooting up the movie theater. The children are shooting up at the mall. There's, riot, uh, there's riots and gangs. We got a problem with gangs. We got a problem with drugs. We got a problem with, 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 with the kids in school. We got a problem with the I, I got the perfect example right here in the Bible. If a man have a stubborn, rebellious son, which not obey the voice of his father, and many of them don't even have fathers, that's problem number one. Or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, or chastened him, that's the first time that word chastened shows up. You get him in the behind with a rod. That's chastening him. You don't go time out. Will not hearken unto him. You you beat that child. You beat that child. I don't mean you beat him to the living dickens and he's black and blue and sore. He never hit a kid in the face. He never hit a kid anywhere but the behind. That's why it's called a rearing. R-E-A-R-I-N-G, the hiney, the rear. God never, never attended any part of the body of a child to be hit but the butt. Okay? And you've done it. And that child still won't listen. Then shall his father his mother lay hold on him and bring him unto the elders of the city at the gate of his place. That's where the judges met. The gates of the cities back then were the city hall. They were the judges. That was the courtroom. That's where all legal matters. That's where all city council meeting. That's where all the city and, and judicial powers were. And they shall say unto the, to the elders of this city, This is our son. He's stubborn, rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He's a glutton and a drunkard. Ooh. My daughter married a drunkard for her husband, and it's just, oh man, this is so terrible. And <clears throat> I got the cure for that. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stone that he die. So thou shalt put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. You're going to kill the child? I'll tell you one thing. 
very first school shooting that happened in America, you ought to take that child or children and call all the children around, not the media, call all the children and say, we're going to have a we're going to have an execution and all the kiddies are going to watch. And we're going to broadcast this on TV. That if you dare assault a principal, a teacher, or any student, or any worker, or any visitor in any school, this is what's going to happen to you. Pull the plug. That's going to happen to you if you mess with anybody. You want to take that gun and you want to kill a bunch of people? This is what's going to happen to you. Hang them. And that will probably scare the living crap. And if it doesn't, that child is a fool and then he needs to be executed. So others can see, we mean business. You don't put them in hotel prison. And I know I've been nine, ten years in prison ministry. I've been behind the doors where you don't go. And I preach two or three times this message about capital punishment. And I got half the room upset with me and half the room said, you're right. And some of the people said that I was right. Believe it or not, a few of them were murderers. I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that. I know murderers. Behind jail, behind the walls. I've shaken their hands and they sat in front of me and, and learned the Bible from me. Murderers. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, don't deter. Look at, look at all the crime. Look at what you get in prison. You get free food. You get free lodging, you get clothing, you get security, you get television, you get books, you get, I say clothing, you get your own personal security for it. You get transportation going back and forth to the courtroom. You got a free phone call. You get a free lawyer. You got free clothes to show up at the courtroom. You can have all the free childs you want. You don't like the decision? Appeal it. You can get basketball, you can get baseball, you can go out in the fresh air. Well, why do they go, why do they get released from prison and go back? Because it's comfortable on the inside. Your honest working person who's innocent has got to work hard to get the stuff that they get behind jail. So, what we have here is, again, Deuteronomy 17.7. It's a capital offense, and it is to deter crime by time. Written by God, recorded by Moses, through God, Jehovah, Almighty God, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is Jesus Christ, that came incarnate, half a hundred percent man, a hundred percent God, said, capital punishment deters crime. Crime that is worthy the death penalty men and women that are sitting on death row, whatever country today, in the eyes of God and toward the word of God. That is evil. I tell you right now. If a man is on death row. And he has been tried at least twice. Been found guilty the first time. And he gets tried again. Whether he wants jury or no jury. Either one. And he's been found guilty the second time. And there are no false witnesses. He ought not to be living on death row any longer.
Paul said, hey, if I'm worthy of death, I refuse not to die. David told Jonathan, hey, listen, if, if I have done a crime against your father, King Saul, kill me now. Slay me personally. This is evil. This is the study of evil. And this is not a sin. Oh, evil is a sin. No, evil is a sin. Uh -huh. No, and also evil can be the reactions or the consequences of sin. Or sin can be, I mean, evil can be sin and consequences. But capital punishment is not a sin. It is the, it is the, the consequences of a criminal that sinned. See why you got to get all 10, now 11 videos, 11 sermons, 11 uh, uh, programs, 11 times we have opened up the Bible. We started this Bible for the fact is that God said, I create evil. We're looking at the fact is, does God sin? No. Is God telling Moses to write down before the children of Israel that capital punishment is to be authorized? It's to be by two or three more witnesses. Is God sinning? No. It is because the person that is found guilty has sinned. And we can run this all with one verse two of the New Testament. The wages of sin, there's the sin, is death. Is death a sin? No. Death is the evil of the consequences of sinning. And all you do is when you put somebody on death row, where, wherever country they are, whatever era they're living on, if they are on death row, all you are doing is extending their wages. They're, they're going to die from their sins anyway. But God says, if there's particular crimes that I have set forth and murder is one of them, they're not to live any longer. And why? Because people are to say, hey, you know what? If I want to kill somebody, I better not. Because if I get caught, I'm going to get the electric chair. If, if I decide to be a grunton child and I decide to go shoot up somewhere, uh, uh, they're going to hang me. Or if I decide to do harm to somebody, I, I do a crime and there, there are people find me guilty. I am going to get an injection. I am no longer going to live if I do a capital offense. But in America today, if I do it a capital offense, I'm going to go live on death row and like Charlie Mason, he died in death row. Uh, China, I think China or Japan, and they do it kind of wrong. But they got the right aspect and I, I could not find how long the wait is but either China or Japan the fact is a man on death row never knows that that day if he wakes up that's the day they're going to execute now they will execute they just don't tell him when Bible says execute right as soon as you find out. And even if it's a child that won't listen to his parents, it's better that that child die by capital offense by the law because he is disobedient, he's a drunkard. Then he grows up and gets himself a gun, gets himself a rock, gets himself poison, gets him whatever he does, and kills others. I think one life is better than. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and then a schoolhouse getting shut up. Or a theater, or a mall, or a riot, or whatever problem. You, you got a problem with gangs? Are they all civil dis destructive? Are they unruly? Have they taken right in the middle of the city and you kill them? Capital punishment. Hopefully the other gangs will say, well, oh, wait a minute, we better. No, you know where gangs go? They go to jail and they have more gangs in jail. 
and the gang members that they're a part of are in jail, and they have a big old gang reunion in jail, and they learn how to be in Connecticut before I left, came to Florida. They're having this rash of bank robberies, and it was very successful. The police were just boggered. And finally, the woman made a mistake. It was a woman. The woman made a mistake, and they caught her. And somebody, I don't know who it was, but somebody got a hold of her and talked to her and said, how did you get away with so many bank robberies? And her answer was to the fact is very simple. I've been in jail before bank robbery. I was in jail with other bank robbers. I myself robbed banks. Well, what are you trying to tell us? I learned from my mistakes and I learned from the men that were already bank robbers how to do it. So the prison system is not a correctional system. It's a schooling system. How to be even more involved in crime. Go ask them. Where, my journey, these, these, these criminals say, where'd you learn how to do the crime or do it better? I wonder how many of those answers will be, oh, I learned it from jail. The correction system do, barely does not work. I was in a prison system. I, I was there teaching the Bible and I had a man say, you know, pray for me. I'm, I'm going Friday, going home. We went there Tuesday night, I think it was. Wednesday was church. I think it was Tuesday night. Anyway, he comes up and he says, I'm, I'm going home Friday. I said, oh, good. He got his name down. I'm not going to tell you. All right. So when we ended the class and the Bible study and I gave the prayer, I prayed for that man by name and I said goodbye to him when I, you know, when I left, he went back to his pod and Tuesday came around and, you know, I waited and they brought me to the pod and all the prisoners came out and here he is. Wow. What happened? You yeah, got delayed or, no, no, I got out. Ooh, no, you didn't get out. You're, yeah, I got out. I got arrested. Here I am again. That's a shame. I'm not saying the correctional system doesn't completely work. I won't say that. It does. I'm not saying it won't. But if you're going to say that capital punishment does not deter crime, you are calling God the Father a liar. It's to have other people say, if I'm going to think about doing that, if I'm even going to do that, that may happen to me. Or one final statement. If it doesn't deter a crime, the person that was put to death under the penalty of the law by the judges and a jury, if you had a jury trial, anybody who was put to death by their crime, I guarantee that person will never commit that crime again. Never. Well, you deterred one person for the crime. Hopefully other people will be smart enough to say, I better not do that. Well, hopefully next time, Lord willing, we have tonight, we have Psalms 77, I believe. Uh, and Friday night and Tuesday, we have the biblical truth of our hymns. That's in the afternoon. And then Thursdays, we try to do an afternoon to study of evil. And I pray that you get these out, share, like, and do whatever needs to be done. To the glory of God. And anybody who you, who you know does not like capital punishment or is not sure about capital punishment, that's what today's evil is. Capital punishment is evil. But it's not sin. The person that sinned in the crimes worthy of capital punishment is guilty in the in the frame of the evilness of capital punishment the capital punishment is the consequences of the person sinning 
murder or whatever the capital offense is. And that's why we're doing this study. Evil's an interesting word. God said, I create evil. He doesn't sin. The government says, we need to put you to death. That's not a sin. It's the person that sinned. And he may get fined. He may get jail time. But if he's worthy of capital offense, then the Bible says the government's supposed to do it. The Bible says, God says, capital punishment is a deterrent to crime. And if you say otherwise, you are calling God a liar. And you need to listen to this again. It'll be on our YouTube, our Facebook, SoundCloud. Uh, we're on Twitter. Uh, we're on a few places. Just go to Google, go Stanley Hayward. And you'll my name will come up and you'll... You'll see one of my messages you can follow. We have the Hayward family website. That's not too popular, but you can probably get it. So, hopefully these lessons will get you closer to God. Capital punishment is supposed to, I don't want to do it. And we already talked about earlier, you're supposed to obey the judges. And if we had people who would obey the judges... What kind of good nation will we have? People don't, we don't have a good nation. Here's my, all right, here, I'm gonna close that. We don't have a good nation. You know why we don't have a good nation? Because we don't obey the Bible. That's that simple. America has allowed all kinds of religions. In God we trust, which God? There's so many. One nation under God. Which one? Islam is loud in the public school system, but the God of the Bible is not. God bless America with all the filthiness. You think God's going to bless America with, with all the abortions? Abortion is a murder. How come the abortionist has not been put to capital punishment? Abortion is a murder. Whatever you believe or not, abortion is murder. And you think God's going to bless America when we have legalized it? I don't think so. I don't think so. And if we want this country to get right, we got to get rid of religions, we got to get the Bible back, and we got to take everybody that's on death row. Remember I said, they've been tried once and found guilty. Jury trial, whatever. That's their choice. Then they appeal. The second appeal, if they're found guilty. Now, if it's a case that's really, you know, shaky, all right, then you go to a Supreme Court. But usually with two court cases, if the person is found guilty twice and it's a capital offense, don't send them back to hotel prison. Now, listen, I, I've got a son in prison. And his crime in the Old Testament is worthy that he died. In the Old Testament. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. And the very fact is, if I if this were to happen, what I'm saying according to the Bible, my son would die. Die saved. So would I. I'm guilty of the crimes. I thought of some of these things. I you know I I, I thought about killing somebody. <laughs> We all do. I wish you dropped dead. That's murder, according to the Bible. God said to Moses, and Moses wrote down according to what God said. If a man is worthy of death, the two or three or more witnesses are to slay him. And then the people of the city. If a child is, is rebellious and would not honor his parents and father, even that's chastisement. You to take that child to the elders and you're to stone him. And if you don't stone him, then we got school shootings, we got riots, we got gangs, we got 
uh, mall shooting. We got theater shooting. We got all these kids killing all these kids. You got rid of timeout. And you chastised their rear end. And you've done what the Bible, you know, we're, we're a biblical nation. No, you're not. You, you do anything but what the Bible says. And God ain't going to bless it. So, see you next time. Thank you for watching.